Hey everybody, today we're going to be talking more about some different uh, Linux commands that you can use and that you will use throughout your Linux career. First we're going to start talking about cat, a utility that catenates files, which will output the data of the file that we're referencing as well. So let's go ahead and start by seeing what we have listed in our home directory. Now again, we know we're in our home directory because of this tilde. So let's go ahead and do ls to list the contents of the directory. Now you'll see that we have a some file called here testfile.txt. So if we wanted to see the contents of that file, we just do cat testfile.txt and press enter. And now you'll see that it outputted the contents of that file to our standard output. Now let's say we wanted to actually concatenate two files and see the output as one, one standard output. All we would have to do is cat space, let's say test file, space, uh, install log, enter. And you'll see that we now have all the data from both files outputted to our one standard output. Now, let's talk a little bit more now about how to create directories. Now to create a directory you need to use the utility mkdir which stands for make directory. We would make directory so let's say we wanted to create a directory called centos. We would do mkdir space centos. If we do ls you'll now see that we have a folder called centos. Now let's say we, let's say we want to copy a file to that folder. So let's say I want to copy testfile.txt to the CentOS folder. I could do cp using the cp utility space testfile space and then I'm going to put the folder name CentOS and this will copy testfile.txt to the CentOS folder. Now I could also copy that same file to the CentOS folder as a different name. Let's go ahead and cp testfile.txt centos as testfile2.txt and now I should have now when I do ls centos you'll see I should see two files testfile2.txt and testfile.txt now if I wanted to actually see that my file was copied and how it was copied I could use uh, the verbose flag so I could just go cp space dash v using the dash v flag and let's copy test file again to our centos folder as test file 3.txt and you'll see that it lets us know that it copied test file.txt to centos test file 3.txt Um, more you could you you could look at all the various there's a, many more flags that you could use with CP, with the CP utility and you can get all those from CP dash dash help and scroll through these or you could use man CP and scroll through those another useful utility is the MV utility which moves files or folders so let's say we wanted to Let's say we wanted to rename this file, testfile.txt, to another file and not necessarily copy it. We could do mv testfile and we'll call it renamed testfile.txt. And now when I do ls, you'll see that we no longer have testfile.txt, we now have renamed testfile.txt. So the mv utility, we used it as a method to rename a file. Now we could also rename folders using the same command. MV CentOS to CentOS, let's say, 2. And we do LS, and now you'll see that we renamed the folder CentOS to CentOS 2. Now we could also move a file into another folder instead of copying it. So let's say I wanted to move my rename test file. I would MV rename test file to, let's say, my CentOS folder, and press enter. And you'll see that I now moved that file to my CentOS folder. Let's go ahead and look at the directory, 
and we have the rename test file. Now let's say I wanted to move that file back out one directory, back to where it was, but I also want to rename it at the same time. I could do move dot dot forward slash oops sorry wait move first the file name rename so centos2 renamed and then since I'm already in my home directory I wouldn't actually I wouldn't actually have to go out of the directory I would just leave leave it at the path that I want and I'll say moved file txt so you'll see that it'll put it into my home directory move file.txt okay. another useful utility that you should be aware of is how to delete a file so let's go ahead and cd into our centos2 directory and let's output the contents of the directory and you'll see we have these three files now let's say I wanted to delete the test file 2.txt I would do rm space test file 2.txt enter uh, remove regular file and you would just push Y and that now remove the file let's go ahead and delete the test file 3.txt but we don't want it to prompt us so we could just do test file 3 okay, test file Hold on. let's just see what we have here and we're going to rm space test file, sorry I forgot the rm command so we'll do rm space test file 3.txt now instead of just running it like that we would all we'd have to do is add the force flag dash f and press enter and you'll see it no longer prompted us sorry about that you'll see that it no longer prompted us to delete the file and it just forcefully removed it for us ls Now, let's say we wanted to remove the folder CentOS2. Let's go ahead and get out of the folder. And let's do rm space dash rf CentOS. Now this would recursively remove that folder and all the, fo and all the files within the folder without, without prompting me. I'd go ahead and press enter do ls and you'll see that we no longer have the CentOS 2 folder another useful utility if you wanted to create a, uh, a quick file empty file is touch so you would touch test.txt ls-l and you'll see that we now have test.txt created May 30th using the current timestamp now, touch can also not only needs to, can also be used for updating timestamps of other files. So let's look at our install.log file. If we did touch install.log, it would just update that file information. You'll see that now it's been updated with the appropriate timestamp. Now you can also change the timestamp by using to whatever you want by using touch and the dash t flag. So we could just do man touch, and this would explain more of how we could use the various different flags in order to change the timestamp or references and more. Another good command is the stat command, which would uh, reveal the statistics of, of any of our files. So let's say we wanted to do stats install log and you'll see it'll give us the size, the amount of blocks it takes, what kind of file it is, if it's a regular file, um, the device address, and some of the extra information that you could use maybe in various scripts. Another useful utility is the find utility, which we could use to search for, let's say, files with certain patterns. Let's just do ls and let's create a file called Oh, well, we have a file called test.txt. We'll use that. And let's go cd to the root folder. So now we're here. And let's say we wanted to find this file, uh, test.txt. 
and we wanted to search within the root folder or we could just search within the root directory the root of the system but all we'd need to do is use find and then we do slash for the root of the root of the system space dash name space and let's say test and this would find any files that have the word test in it within the root of the system press enter this could take some time especially since we're searching the entire root of the system but let's see what it finds so I found these files so far and you'll notice that it gives you the absolute path to each of the files now let's say we didn't want to wait and we want to just cut off what it's doing right now we would just do control C and let's say we knew a little bit more of where this file could possibly be located we would just do find slash root right, dash name test because we know that test file that we're looking for is somewhere within the root directory. And you'll see it didn't find anything. So, oh, because we have a .txt extension, sorry about that. So let's do .txt, and you'll see that it finds the root test.txt file and gives us the absolute path. Now, let's say we wanted to see a list of our aliases for instance in some distros uh, like for instance CentOS or some Red Hat distros you can use an LL command which is using the ls-l long format to list out a list of your directories which, uh, within a given directory a list of your directories or files so we could just type alias and this would display all of the alias commands that we could use relative to this user in the shell. So we have alias CP, which you see it prompts us for interactive mode. Because CP by default is not interactive, as well as RM. So remember when we just use RM by itself, it would use the interactive mode since we set it here. Now let's say we wanted to let's say we wanted to create a new alias. For instance, we can create one that's remove. So we just do alias remove. And let's say every time we use this, we didn't want to. We wanted it just to automatically, forcibly remove and recursively remove whatever we give it. So we just do rm-rf. And that would take care of that. Press enter. And let's go back to our home directory. And let's say we want to remove test2. So we just remove test2. Boom. And it's gone. So now we were able to create an alias that would run the command exactly how we want. Now, notice how we have ls-l. It doesn't really give us the files in a nice readable format. So let's say we wanted to change. Let's print out all our aliases. And let's say we wanted to create a a list format that would give us the human readable so we'll just call it list so let's type alias to set an alias list equals ls-lh which will give us the human it's the h the human readable flag let's press enter and now next time we type list you'll see that it gives us a human readable format of file sizes so 4.4k